All right. We're gonna do a little D11 calibration for shear wave, and I will pull up the sections of the code as we go to verify that I am following this inspection criteria here. Also, the transducer is within requirements as well. We have an IIW block here. We have the type one block. So our reflectors for our distance calibration, we could choose to do a one inch and a four inch reflector, or we could do a four inch and a, watch this, four plus one plus four gives us nine. So two signals that we're looking for is the four and nine inch signals which pretty predominant on the screen there four and nine now first things first what i need to do is verify my beam exit point which i'm going to do by lowering the gain here so that i can see the peak of the signal the peak meaning whenever I have the most amount of amplitude that I can get from that signal. See how you have that rise and fall, rise and fall. I'm gonna stop at the highest position of that and then I'm gonna come onto the edge of the block and look at where my beam exit point lines up. Right at that zero for us. Actually, just a hair. Well, I might have scooted actually. Just a hair behind. So my beam exit point came out just a hair behind the laser cut line. Just a hair behind this laser cut line right here. So what I can do is I can put a put a little mark where that came out. And what will happen over time as you use these wedges, as you abrasive against the material, you'll wear the surface down. And, and so that beam exit point won't always be perfect over time. And even the angle will drift as well over time. Not a problem as long as we know where that beam exit point is. Up next, D11. I think that that's a great time to do the distance calibration, but we'll, we'll go step by step with the procedure here. We're going to aim at that Lucite disc and generate a reflector from that and maximize that as well, which is proving to be a little more right over there where it goes to stop and turn around. Right on 70. Beam exit point lined right up. I like to take this opportunity to come to the trig function and inform the instrument of the angle that we are working with. If that were to be 71 or 72, I would put the correct angle measure in there. Back around to that beam exit point. Back around to that beam exit point, rise, fall, full sweeping motion, boom, stop on the beam exit point. And we're going to raise the DB just a little bit to get that 9 inch signal up involved. And we can do it long hand or short hand. In the essence of time and for your video, I'm going to do it short hand here. We're going to go to the auto cal menu. And with gate one, and with gate one measuring the four inch signal, I'm going to hit cal zero. And then inform the instrument that that distance is actually four inches. Okay. Hit continue. And then move my gate position back so I can measure that nine inch signal location.
and hit cal velocity when I maximize that indication. Just right about there. Cal velocity inform the instrument of that nine inch nature. Notice the instrument was measuring about an inch off. And if we calibrate with another style of transducer, what that is, the reason for that inch, is we've got a monstrous wedge on here. There's a lot of standoff distance, and the cable that we're using today is actually pretty big as well. And so probe delaying those out, we can come and look at our basic settings and see that that gave us 16 microseconds of zero offset or probe delay and gave us a velocity of 1287, which I'm happy with. Distance calibration done. Beam exit point known. Angles verified. We flip the block over and we are going to set the sensitivity of the instrument for the inspection. And to do that, we are going to locate the 60 thousandths hole here just above that Lucite disc. Personal preference, I like to start here and pull back until I see that reflector there. Ooh, I've got a cut on my block and it is digging into my wedge. Right about there's that peak. We're gonna park on that position and we're gonna raise the gain to put that signal between 40 and 60% screen height. We're gonna put that signal between either 40 and 80% screen height. Depends on the amount of noise in the inspection, how much you wanna, how much gain you wanna put into that. The risk of going too high is to ruin our signal to noise ratio. If you hadn't already, it would be, it would mean we'd have to go back and recalibrate, but this could be a good opportunity to verify that you have optimal pulser settings to maximize what you're seeing as well as on the receiver. We could adjust the filter and see what produces the best signal response. Kind of like that one right there. Back that up. And that kicked it up to 80% screen height for me. So I'm gonna back that off a little bit because I like, I think that's a little loud for these Flawtech plates here. So we're gonna kick it 60% uh, screen height, okay? Make sure that you're on the peak. I always like to do a little double check before I move on. And we're actually gonna write down the gain value that it took for that to occur. Press add here, and then my reference gain is now at 48.6 dB. I would write that down on the ultrasonic report form, much like the one shown here. We would insert that value in for the reference level. That reference level, what we're talking about is the 60 thousandths hole what gain does it take in order for this wave to see this indication that high on our screen? And we're going to go on to the weldment here and compare what gain value it takes to see a defect in the plate as to what gain value it took to see the 60 thousandths hole. So it's a little comparative analysis. We'll break that down more when we get to the reporting side of the UT. And that, ladies and gentlemen, after I add my scanning dB, which would be plus six dB, boonyah, or 12 or 14, it depends. There's a annex, sorry, not an annex. Uh, there's a table that it'll direct you to that has suggested uh, reference level increases. But that will be in the next video, folks. That right there was a shear wave calibration in accordance with AWS D11. What we did was we verified our beam exit point, verified our angle, 
calibrated our distance using known reflectors here, and then we just finished that up with setting our system sensitivity. Here's a outstanding little drawing with some steps that you can, oh, call it a wallet card, if you will, for a shear wave calibration. As always, you're only alone with this content. If you choose to be, feel free to reach out to your instructors, and we'll see you in the next one.